So I have some really important news for you guys. The Supreme Court now has a case in front of them which is seeking review of a state's ban on so-called assault weapons and then also standard magazines. Now, of course, if the Supreme Court grants review to this case, it's gonna have huge ramifications nationwide. So let's talk about what's happening. But real quick, before we jump into this video, I wanna mention that we do have a podcast available. You can find links to it down in the description section and also in the pinned comment. It's over on Apple and Spotify. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. And if you wanna give me an easy birthday present because today is my birthday, you know, one of those ways you can give me a free birthday present is of course going and following the podcast and then also just subscribing here to the channel. But regardless, thank you guys so much for all of your support. So like I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're going to be breaking down an important situation, an important case that is now up for Supreme Court consideration and review. A petition has just been filed to the Supreme Court for the Supreme Court to step in and review the Illinois ban on so-called assault weapons and then also their ban on magazines. The case we're gonna be talking about and going through in this video is Calkins v. Pritzker. And this is a, an important case, again, coming out of Illinois, which is, again, a challenge to the Protect Illinois Communities Act, also PICA, or the PIC Act, as some people call it. Again, a law which was put in place, which is unconstitutional and restricts certain rifles and magazines within the state of Illinois. Also important for the context of this video is PICA also requires a registration component where if you want to grandfather in those rifles, you know, if you want to maintain possession of them, you have to register them with the state through the FOID requirement. You have to submit an affidavit and that has to be done, you know, before January of 2024. So time is very much of the essence in this case and all these other cases which are challenging this unconstitutional law in Illinois. Well, now one of those Illinois cases has made its way up to the Supreme Court and the plaintiffs in this case are asking for the Supreme Court to step in right here and now. Now, this case has an interesting background, which also might intrigue the Supreme Court and make them want to take this case even more. This case, of course, is challenging PICA, but it's in a state court. It comes out of a state court. And the case was originally brought in an Illinois lower court, a circuit court there, uh, who ultimately on review entered a judgment against the state of Illinois. And that judge there declared that this ban in Illinois is unconstitutional and he voided it because it violated the Second Amendment. It violated equal protection um, and a lot of other things. And he found that it violated the fundamental right to keep and bear arms. So he struck down this law. In response to losing that case, the state of Illinois decided to appeal the decision directly up to the Illinois State Supreme Court. Now, here's where things get really interesting for this case and where things get a little bit intriguing potentially for the Supreme Court of the United States. The state of Illinois Supreme Court has seven judges that sit on the Supreme Court and ultimately review all these cases. Two of those judges on the Illinois Supreme Court were recently elected to office and, you know, back in, I believe, November of 2022. During their election process, both of those judges received substantial campaign contributions from the governor of, you know, Illinois, who is actually one of the defendants in this case. And so the defendant here, the governor of Illinois, who also is responsible and is a big champion of this assault weapon ban in Illinois, directly paid contributions to those judges who, oh, by the way, are also going to review this case. Both of those judges in combination received about $2.6 million in contributions from the governor and then also some other sources. Because of that fact, the plaintiffs filed a petition to the Illinois Supreme Court in asking for them to disqualify those two judges or for those two judges to recuse themselves from the case. Even more concerning was the fact that these two judges during the whole campaign actually kind of championed an assault weapon ban and said that they would potentially protect any assault weapon ban if it was passed. However, on review, the Illinois Supreme Court denied the plaintiff's motion to disqualify these two judges, and they ultimately found that there is no overarching rule by the court or in their rules that they themselves can disqualify either of these judges. Instead, each of these justices would need to determine on their own, on his or her own, if they wanted to recuse themselves. And of course, these two judges did not want to recuse themselves from the case. They reviewed the case, and in a four to three decision authored by one of those non-recused judges, the Supreme Court of Illinois decided to reverse the lower court's judgment that invalidated this Illinois ban on so-called assault weapons. So they upheld the PIC Act and found that it was indeed uh, constitutional, and they reversed the lower court's decision. And it's this case and those facts which has now made its way up to Supreme Court and is being submitted to the Supreme Court for cert and for Supreme Court review. Not only is there an underlying question about the PIC Act and the ban on so-called assault weapons and magazines and the whole Second Amendment question, 
but there's also a huge question about whether or not these two Illinois judges should have in fact recused themselves from reviewing this case. Now, this case has been submitted as a traditional writ of cert, but I also would anticipate in some ways that soon we may see some sort of request for an emergency administrative stay, at least until the Supreme Court decides if they want to take up this case. That type of request is necessary because starting in January of 2024, the registration deadline is up in Illinois. Once the PIC Act, written the whole registration deadline is up, anyone who did not file a FOID affidavit for your rifle will then be open to arrest and potential misdemeanor criminal charges for violating the PIC Act. I will note, however, that there has already been an attempt to get the Supreme Court to step in on an emergency basis. Um, you know, there has been some requests for early intervention by the Supreme Court. For example, this year alone, NAGR in their challenge against the city of Naperville asked for an emergency stay from the Supreme Court. It was submitted to Justice Barrett and then she referred it to the full court. And the full court ultimately denied the emergency stay request. But now it's a little bit different of a situation because that was early intervention. Now this case is actually being submitted to the Supreme Court for review. And then there's probably gonna be some sort of tag along or request for an emergency stay for some sort of temporary relief, at least to potentially stop that registration deadline. Now again, that's hopeful. We don't know that that for sure is going to happen, but I think that's kind of going to be some of the strategy going forward, at least to try to get some sort of temporary relief here in Illinois. Now in this request to the Supreme Court, the plaintiffs argue that the pertinent inquiry is whether the class of firearms is commonly possessed for lawful purposes today. Well, the plaintiffs argue that this law can be easily found unconstitutional because it bans arms that are in common use for lawful purposes. They're referring there to the Heller and McDonald decisions and then also Bruin. Now, what they're doing here, in fact, is they're arguing that the very structure of the PIC Act, that PICA, this law itself, which grandfathers in some of these rifles and some of these firearms, also by its own mechanism, makes these types of firearms in common use. Now, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of this type of legal argument. They're almost arguing, you know, in some way kind of for this law. And they're not really, but they're trying to show like how this law implodes on itself, how the logic of this law and the grandfather mechanism makes these farms in common use. Instead, I would just rather them just argue, hey, these types of farms are in common use clearly for lawful purposes. They're owned by the millions across the nation. Millions of AR-15s are owned, so clearly they're in common use for lawful purposes and you cannot ban them. They also go on to point out that the registration provisions creates a sunset on the right to keep and bear arms of these common arms. Essentially, they're arguing that anyone who purchases and registers these common arms gets to exercise their fundamental rights going forward. But once the clock strikes midnight on January, in January, everyone else will be left out and they cannot exercise their Second Amendment right to possess these types of common arms and that fundamental right to keep and bear arms just essentially evaporates going forward. And because of this, they argue that this law creates two classes of Illinois residents, one class who will get to exercise their right to keep and bear arms, um, you know, will have some sort of limited capacity because of the registration of these firearms, while the other class is essentially SOL once the clock strikes midnight with the registration process. They also argue that that violates equal protection rights because it creates a dual class of citizens within the state. And then also there's a lot of issues with the exemptions for law enforcement and all these other individuals and the whole grandfather mechanism also creates some equal protection issues. And based on that, the plaintiffs request that the Supreme Court grant review to this case. I also wanna note that a big part of this writ of cert to the Supreme Court is a request for the Supreme Court to also review whether those two Illinois judges should have recused themselves from reviewing this case. The plaintiffs argue that the Illinois Supreme Court justices violated their rights to due process under the 14th Amendment. The result of that violation, they argue, is a direct infringement on the right to keep and bear arms. So this is definitely an interesting and important case. The hope is that Supreme Court will in fact grant review to this case and hopefully for those individuals in Illinois, some sort of emergency stay or administrative stay will also be requested and granted by the Supreme Court, at least potentially temporarily to stop that impending registration deadline. Of course, if this case is granted, it would be huge for magazine bans and rifle bans nationwide. You know, states like California, Washington, Illinois, New Jersey, Maryland, and so many others would have their laws impacted by any Supreme Court review of these rifle bans or magazine bans. So again, a huge case, something we definitely need to keep our eyes on and see what happens and what develops going forward. But if anything else happens, of course, I will let you guys know. So if you guys like this video and you like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. 
All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I just want to mention my podcast. You can find it using the links down below in the detail section, the pinned comment. I would love your guys' support, but regardless, thank you guys so much for all of your support. Thank you for watching and never forget this nation was built by Arm Scholars and this nation will be maintained by Arm Scholars.